Hello and welcome back to another Bear With Me with me, Bear Elliot. And today we have a Bear Essential with Daredevil, the Netflix original. I guess I should officially call it the Marvel Daredevil. This is Netflix first in a series of exclusive Marvel series. Now Daredevil is a classic Marvel character created by Stan Lee. Daredevil is not one of my most favorite characters. And the first movie, now I am one of the minority that actually thinks that the Ben Affleck movie wasn't all that bad, especially the director's cut. The cinematic release, uh, that was kind of a hard one. But the director's cut was quite good. So I went into this one a little bit iffy because Marvel has really hit it out the park on many of their series so far. They've had a couple of rather slow movies, but this one I was kind of a little nervous about, especially since it was going to be a Netflix exclusive. Now, they did state right at the beginning that this was going to be very dark, and that's kind of how Daredevil has to be. Daredevil is not one of these touchy-feely, like, huggable characters, like the Hulk. Yeah, no. But it is rather a good series. I just finished binge-watching it. came out yesterday. Finished watching it today. It's a lot, a lot of watching. Yeah. Overall, I won't say the actors' names because I will screw them up, but I'll refer to them as their Marvel characters. Let's start out with Daredevil, also known as Matt Murdock. Matt Murdock was blinded by an accident. He was helping out a man that was about to ready to be ran over by a chemical truck. His chemical truck was carrying some kind of chemical that got into his eyes, caused him to go blind, but also heightened all of his sense, senses to extreme measures. Now, there's been different interpretations of that particular power in the comic books, but this, this series really did a good job of explaining it. Basically, all of his senses, except for the sense of sight, have been honed to and heightened to a almost be able to create an image inside of his head of what's going on to the fact where he can even taste if somebody is cut he can taste their blood the copper in the air it's very interesting and i did like how they interpreted it on the series next up we have foggy nelson foggy nelson is matt murdoch's friend has been his friend since college and is also his partner in law uh I was a little iffy when I started watching the series about the actor. I was like, oh, this isn't really how I envisioned Foggy to be. But the guy grew on me. He did really, really well. Um, his acting ability, pretty good. Wasn't anything too bad. Same thing with Matt Murdock, the actor who's playing Daredevil and Matt Murdock. I liked him. Um, I wouldn't say I was captivated by him, but I liked him. Next up, we have Karen Page. I, Karen Page, that poor girl, she, she had a hard life in the comics. So in the comics, she is Foggy and Matt's secretary, who actually had an infatuation with Matt. Then she fell in love with Daredevil, then found out he became Daredevil. Then she went to LA, got addicted to heroin, became a porn star, and then came back to New York, cleaned herself up, and ends up being killed. Yeah, yeah, poor thing. Not a good life for her. But I love the actress that's portraying her. It's, she played, what was it, Jessica? I think, yeah, Jessica. Jessica on True Blood. And I really was happy to see that she's, she's got more work. Hey, way to go you. I'm happy for you. And I liked her acting. They used her a lot, especially in the different storyline that was continuing throughout the whole entire thing. I liked her a lot. I really, really dug the character and... I really am happy to see that she's continuing work, and Karen was a good addition. Last but certainly not least, there's other characters in the series that are pulled from the comics, but the next one I want to talk about is Kingpin. Now, Kingpin. Will Wilson Fisk. Hmm. Now, I didn't like what they did with this character at all. Um, I really did not like the portrayal. It always seemed like Wilson... Or, Let's just call him Kingpin, because Kingpin, Kingpin is supposed to have this, like, amazing, overpowering, as soon as he enters in a room, he commands it, he's strong, there's nothing that gets to this man, he is the Kingpin of crime, he's the ultimate evil, originally started out as a Spider-Man villain, but then branched over to Daredevil, and, hmm, I didn't like it, I didn't like the acting, it always seemed like 
the guy was about ready to cry at every every second. I mean, they did give it give the backstory of his dad was abusive and he killed his dad because his dad was beaten up on his mom. I just didn't like it. I did not like that portrayal of Kingpin. It it wasn't Kingpin to me. Kingpin is supposed to be controlling, strong. This guy seemed weak and he was barely controlling his empire. I didn't like it. I did like, spoiler alert, I hate saying that. I hate when people say that, but hey, spoiler alert, stop it at the uh, 5.30 mark because it's a little bit long because it's a very essential, so we're going over the entire series. Okay, I did like that there was a lot of nods to it being connected to the Marvel Cinematic Universe and also to possible characters appearing if this gets a second season, I, I which I, I'm pretty sure it will. There was a sneak, just a like a single phrase that was said about that Matt dated a Greek girl back in college and how attractive she was and it ended. Hmm, wonder who that could be. I bet she has an electric personality or electrifying. Okay, it was Electra. You know, we, we all know it was Electra. So that would be really cool. And I'd really like to see Jennifer Gardner come back and like play her mom or something. That'd be kind of cool. Um, also, I liked, I liked Jennifer Gardner's Electra. I didn't like the movies. Those, those movies are horrible. Next little nod was the Gladiator. Um, Gladiator is a continuous presence throughout the Marvel Universe. And he's in here and he actually makes the Daredevil costume. Um, interesting take on him, giving him almost like a, some kind of, he's extremely smart and can create these amazing, uh, costumes and gadgets and everything, which he can do in the comics, but gave him almost like he was slow. There was something mentally not right with the man. And I really, and the guy that played him, ooh, he's a hot bear. Mm, very, very cute. Last little, like, sneak in, like, Easter egg in there was, I think that we saw Bullseye. Um, there is a sniper that Fisk used to take out some cops. You never see the guy's face, but he's a crack shot, and they said, oh, he's under our employment, which in the comics, Bullseye is a to hire assassin. So I think that was our little sneak peek of Bullseye in there. That would be pretty sweet to see him come into. Also very curious about who Stick was talking to with all the scars on the back. I don't know who that was. Um, and I did like the ties, like I said, to the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe that they made. Uh, one of the characters made reference to Thor's hammer and Tony Stark's armor. And they also made reference to how the real estate in Hell's Kitchen had gone down since the incident. Hmm. Could have been like an alien invasion. All right. So this has been eight minutes. Very essential about Daredevil. Overall, um, what I'm going to rate this as a three paw. Uh, I think it has a lot of great places to go if it does get a second season. But I thought that the Kingpin acting was really what brought that down. And it just wasn't captivating to me. I really wanted to be like just sucked into this and not want to leave my TV. I actually cleaned my apartment while I did it. I did get a lot of dusting done. So that has been my Bear Essential. That's three paws for Marvel's Daredevil, a Netflix exclusive series. So until next time, bye, Cublet! I could count in the dark, I see you calling my name I hear you shouting, hear you calling, but it's not the same Every weapon you're throwing right into my back Doesn't matter to me, cause I'm keeping my trick Let me go Let me go Let me go